Greetings from afar. I hope you're doing great. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on where you're joining us from. Welcome to today's program. On behalf of Badminton Pan America, we welcome you to our Coach Corner program, Sports Science. My name is Adrián Gómez, and I am pleased to be the moderator of this session. I join you from the city of San Jose in Costa Rica. Today we have the pleasure of having one of the most prominent coaches in badminton worldwide after the paper call we did in our region. Joining us, we have coaches Raul Ignacio Andrade and Gerardo Mayela, who will talk about badminton training, planning, and assessment programs in preparing athletes to participate in the National Games Colombia 2019. Before leaving you with our speakers, I'd like to summarize a little bit about their career in our sport. Raul Ignacio Andrade is a college professor, badminton coach in Colombia, shuttle time tutor, and BWF coach level one. Coach Gerardo Mayela Fernandez is also college professor, research professor in functional assessment and anthropometry in badminton and other disciplines. Without further ado, let's welcome coaches Gerardo and Raul. Good afternoon, coaches. Welcome to our program. Thank you for sharing with our audience and welcoming us to your home in Colombia. Welcome. Good afternoon, Adrian. Thank you very much. Good afternoon to all the audience of Coach Corner. It's a pleasure to be here. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to thank God for this opportunity, as well as Badminton Panam and all the participants who have joined us. Great, Raul, Gerardo. So the mic is yours. Go ahead. Thank you very much, Adrian. Gerardo, please, let's start. Thank you very much. I would like to thank once again, God, for allowing us to be here. I would also like to thank the Badminton Pan American Confederation for such an important program, which has been quite useful for our Badminton Pan American family. Today, we'd like to share with you the experience we had with Professor Mayela, Gerardo Mayela, entitled Badminton Training, Planning and Assessment Programs in Preparing Athletes to Participate in the National Games Colombia 2019. To start, from the research methodology point of view, we post certain objectives, which were, first of all, a general objective which was to build based on the formulation of anthropometric and functional diagnosis, a training load plan and dosage for badminton athletes in Colombia. That was the general goal. And based on that, we had three specific objectives, which were concrete and operational in the following order. First, to do the anthropometric assessment of badminton athletes who were to participate in the National Games 
Colombia in 2019. The second objective was to develop the functional assessment of badminton athletes participating in nation, international games Colombia 2019. And the third objective was to elaborate the training plan for the year 2019, the fourth macro cycle of a pluriannual cycle that began in the year 2016. For the athletes participating uh, in the National Games Colombia 2019. So, once we set the objectives, let me just give you a bit of a context. From that point of view, I would like to tell you a little bit about the context. Badminton started in or appeared in Colombia in the eighties, but it was not de- it was not quite developed. And in the year twenty two thousand five, it the, the national federation was founded, thanks to the different leagues that founded these uh, federations, so to speak. So we worked with athletes in the Valley of Cauca, which is in the southwest of Colombia. I think that you've heard of Cali, its capital. And in the beginning, the target audience in- included 100, 150 children between 8 and 12 years old. Throughout the process, which is a bit long, which was a bit long, this population uh, decreased. And for this specific study, we kept eight athletes, which were the ones who allowed us to develop this paper. As I said, the process began in the year 2006. After the Federation Constitution, And in that year, until the year 2019, we carried out this process. So it's been 13 years in the making, ongoing, and and this was an ongoing process. And athletes were part of this throughout this time. Very few of these uh, began later on. Among these were the the girl who you can see in in this uh, picture. She began in the year 2007, 2008. She became an athlete, even though she had always been present in the sport. So she, so we began with a program. The idea was to develop a program called Promotion, Badminton Promotion and Socialization 2006 to 2010. The idea was to do it in that uh time frame, which we did, and its main focus was human education, mainly based on the development and skill skill development, which skills? Perceptive motor, social motor, and physical motor skills. So we wanted mainly children to be stimulated in these sensitive stages and also to develop the social aspect. Obviously, we wanted to develop their physical skills. who could play badminton so they could fall in love with badminton. So the achievements were in that sense. Children who enjoyed badminton a lot, who fell in love with badminton, who 
actually um, developed academically speaking, but also in their human aspects and in their personal aspects as well. So from the very beginning, pretty much, we worked together with the Badminton Colombian Federation who allowed us to follow all of these processes. Then, after this part of the program, we turned to a different stage where we structured a program that was a bit different and we called it human development and human develop and human education through badminton 2011 2015 so after the first program we emphasized the techniques of badminton and making them more perfect and do this in a comprehensive way so we could have athletes with a wide range of human and sports aspects so planning stopped being uh, an educational program. And even though we did not forget this uh, aspect, we started planning the trainings based on the different contexts that we had. For example, aerobic capacity through the Laguerre test and Cooper test, but without forgetting the scientific aspect that we should follow. Obviously, we did not have all the different elements, but we did an assessment that allowed us to build this planning. And we did this through the McBayet model, which we all know. And it's the one that allowed us to follow the strengthening process in sports development. In parallel, in the year 2012, approximately, the Badminton Pan American Confederation, together with the Galileo University, launched a postgraduate program in high performance badminton training so we followed these studies and we did the studies and strengthened the process that we had in this program so from this point on we learned contemporary models that you already know there are many however we thought it was quite attractive and quite efficient and that's why we followed the ATR contemporary model and we did the modifications based on that. And this was strengthened by the other uh, courses such as shuttle time and uh, coach education program. And this allowed us to have a higher qualification thanks to the courses from Badminton Panam. So with based on the activities that I just mentioned, we joined efforts with a couple of universities in order to do research exercises with senior students who were pretty much professionals in physiotherapists and others in order to see different aspects that did not become research papers because it was not the purpose, but they, we did them in a rigorous way and allowed us to had a lot more elements for training planning, which was what we wanted to do with these children in order to keep developing this program. And in parallel, we did a series of um, activities with the different athletes that participated in China, in Indonesia, in Spain, Guatemala, and Mexico with these camps. Uh, strengthening the whole process. Talking about competition, we participate in different competitions in the Panam region, in the South American Junior Games, uh, in the Junior Pan American Games, in the Youth Games in Peru. Sebastian Andrade, who you see in the photograph, is one of the one, uh, athletes who was able to participate together with the group. 
So what we achieved, what we achieved was that participation and thanks to all of the effort that we did in Colombia in order to promote badminton through shadow time and all of those processes, called Col Deportes included or Col Sports included badminton for the first time in 2015. And so the children participated that year in 2015. So it was quite an achievement to be first in those national badminton games carried out in the Tolima department in Colombia in 2015. Six athletes were able to participate, six out of the eight, eight, but the remaining two were able to participate in parallel in the Junior World Championship that was carried out in Peru. So this was an important achievement. Besides, there was uh, quite a human growth and academic uh, development as well. From that point on, we were able to continue the process of assessment that we had because we were always concerned about the assessment elements to plan, but we were always concerned, Gerardo and I, since the year 2001, about how to monitor the plans and the training loads and keep control of them because it was evident to know which types of loads were being created and the impacts of these loads in athletes so mistakes weren't made and we wouldn't harm their health. So we kept doing assessments in that sense according to the resources of the environment. Then we had the pluriannual cycle 2016-2019 because the second edition of the games in Colombia were in 2019. And we decided to continue this program uh, entitled Human Development and Education Through Badminton. And one of the goals were to optimize the level and move on to high performance. So we continued planning with ATR, assessing according to the context. And on the right side, you can see some of the templates or forms that we did throughout this process. We were quite rigorous and but including but using the technical objects that we had so we included for example the actual weight of the athletes the ideal weight the size the body mass in bat index uh fat percentage uh cooper test legger uh, test uh, burpee test uh, maximum oxygen consumption, flexibility, speed, and so on and so forth. And we did this assessment in the beginning of the year, in the middle of the year, and at the end of the year. So in the 2016-2019 cycle, our target was to do something that we had already been working on in the last six years, which was to articulate these assessments throughout the years in a complete way, so to speak. So this allowed us to build a software, which is the section that uh, Professor Herard is going to share with us, together with an interdisciplinary process where the biomedical bodies played a very important role. Gerardo, thank you. In this second part, I'm going to explain the methodology and the results that we had in three different points in time until we got to the planning stage. First, the anthropometric assessment, which became quite important 
in we used uh, Dr. Deborah Kerr's method and we found the distribution of the tissue composition in five different tissues as well as the somat somatotype and the body structure. Then in the second stage, we did the functional evaluation. What we did was to see three different condition capacities such as endurance, flexibility, and power using in my lab protocols that were more scientific in order to have a more important result with a lower margin of error. Then we included both stages in the training planning which Professor Raul used in order to implement the ATR model and have it this load in different dosages in terms of the competitions that were outlined in a cycle. So now I would like to share the results that we got based from the anthropometric assessment. We can see the men and female results. And we can see that men had an average were 23 years old in average and women 19 years old in average the height for men was 1.75 and women 1.61 and the values had a similar range in comparison to men the weight was 74.9 for men and 57.5 for women and if we notice the difference in men, this variable is more representative. These first three elements, when we checked it, this, what was the state of art in this sports discipline, they apply with a high approach in terms of what happened around the world. Talking about body composition, and as I explained uh, later, using the Dr. Dr. Deborah Kerr's method, we found we can find in the graphs the distribution of all five tissues. The most representative aspects in both uh, genders is the muscle tissue, and this classification have very high values for the sport. Likewise, the adipose tissue or fat was less in men and broader in women for this sport. We also found a very special behavior in the structure of osseous tissue or bones in women with values that are over the values that we usually find in this type of population. The same happens with men. So we were able to understand that the bone structure, the osseous structure was quite uh, high and solid and we could take advantage of this in order to care for all the different demands from this board. Now, the skin was in regular parameters as well as the residual tissue. We were not just content with these uh, variables. So we did a scanner seg assessment, segmental assessment, and we decided to intervene in three different segments in the lower limbs. Because even though it's true that with Dr. Kerr's methodology, we had a global idea of the body structure, we needed to know what was happening in the different segments and if there were a possible asymmetry between the muscle tissue and the adipose tissue from the right side and the left side. And we found a lot of surprises that actually contributed to the plyometric work that we were going to do and minimize the bilateral deficit. 
in this image you can see in red the imbalance the higher percentage from one side the red uh, numbers are the high values in both genders and the unbalance in power and energy generation in some muscle segments we could see that the left side was dominant in men in quadriceps the right side in ischiotibials and the right side in gastrocemias in women there was more strength in the right side in the quadriceps in the ischiotibials the left side in the gast gastrocnemius the right side this actually confirmed that we had to take care of this unbalance and through the plyometric method we could create this symmetry in order to have a better performance in the field of play talking about the adipose tissue if you can see the unbalance was less in terms of its composition however the values were quite high for what was required for this discipline except for women on the left side of the quadriceps the rest of them were the distribution was quite similar in this adipose tissue so we used the plyometric method exposed by dr Horacio anselmic in order to achieve as i said before the appropriate symmetry then we studied the somatotype and here we found that the behavior from the global aspect in green and yellow well this is a study from the year 2016 from professor alvarez in badminton uh, youth players from Spain. This is uh, quite a quite recent study and it's uh, related to the study that we have and we find that the location in, these somato, in the somato chart shows a classification in men as ectomorphic endomorph and for women balance endomorph so according to our study men represented in blue in this somatic chart showed a muscle composition that was quite high with a mesomorphic component that is very representative however in women this behavior was more towards endomorph with an important component in mesomorph or muscle tissue except for these for these uh, girl that was studied however this was also an alert for us in order to take care of this behavior in women so we could take them more to the mesomorphia and reduce the endomorphia which would be affecting the performance in different capabilities. And this is how Professor Raul uh, heard my suggestion and we targeted this together with the, the other variables that I mentioned before. Talking about power or strength creation, we use the jump mat from Carmelo Bosco in order to estimate the height reached and the time of contact and the time of flight and the Q index based on the Abalakov jump where men classification was quite surprising. And according to Jose Acero's classification chart, oh, and I would like to say hello to him in case he is in this call he was my professor 
and he was the scientific assessor. And thanks to his support, I have been able to reach different valuations. So thank you very much, Dr. Acedo, if you are here with us now. So I was saying that power classified in men as average uh, using the Abalakov jump. In women, this was classified as average and in men over average. But this was a tool that besides warning us and putting us women in context together with the work that R Professor Rowe did, we were able to serve the deficits that she that they presented, that women presented, as well as men that was quite representative in the development of these work in competitions. Very well, thank you very much, Gerardo. So as always, I would like to ask the audience to take a break and in the meantime, we're going to test their knowledge of current badminton. So we invite you to answer today's trivia. The question is, where is the shuttle? So, please, we challenge you to tell us where is the shuttle right now. Let's wait for the answer. Some people say C, others say B, others F. We should take the shuttle projection into account, especially for our para badminton athletes. So let's give it 20 more seconds. And I challenge you, Raul and Gerardo, to send your answers as well. 15 more seconds. Some people uh, have already gotten it right. So let's ask the technical team to show the answer. So the right answer was B. That's where the shuttle was. So congratulations to all winners. Please, Raul and Gerardo, let's continue with your interesting study. Go ahead. Thank you very much, Adrian. I got it right. I said it was B. Perfect, great. Let's hope Raul did too. Let's continue then with what we explained to before. We we're talking about the conditional aspects. And on this slide, you can see the results of the flexibility assessment. So talking about this scale, we also were surprised here, taking into account that men who used the flexi test proposed by Professor Araujo, we saw that men scored uh, high and women extremely high. If we see the context of this method, Professor Araujo includes 20 determination in order to see their degree of freedom and it turns out that men had a classification in this context and we were supposed to identify in a very accurate way which articulations uh, presented m the most more rigidity and to check it 
because this was another uh, warning for coaches and athletes in ex who explained to them what was going on in certain articulations in the seven maps that Dr. Araujo's methodology creates. So this allowed us to earn freedom and in the field of play so athletes were able to have a better performance. Finally, we intervened in the resist in the endurance skill. In order to do this, we used the Bruce protocol. So this allowed us to use the load increase every three minutes in kilometers per hour. There are other bands that use it with um, other values, but in my lab, it was with kilometers per hour. With inclination and indirectly, we were able to estimate the resting metabolic units and the oxygen volume that we could achieve in each one of these times. But we were not happy with these values alone, so we added the lactic acid measurement. With this methodology and this protocol, we found the following results. The final, the indirect final oxygen maximum consumption was uh, more representative in men in comparison to women. In the case of women, this dispersion was not there. They all finished in pretty much the same time in all stages. However, in men, this uh, dispersion was quite meaningful. 11.3 of standard deviation is quite high, which implies or makes us understand that some of them finished a lot later and others a lot earlier, a little earlier. So with this, we had a classification of the maximum oxygen consumption, which needed to be improved for the aerobic conditions of the children. And we included these with the lactic acid behavior. And we did this at two different moments at the end of the test. At the very last time, a, mi a minute after the failure, and we measured the lactic duct in the blood, finding values of 11 po point uh, four in men and 7.9 in women. Uh, the difference is quite high in the lactate uh, concentration, but it's proportional to the time w w that these tests last. What was surprising was seven minutes after finishing the test in this endless uh, band, we saw that there was a reduction which was delivered associated to the COVID cycle, and in women there was an increase. And this was also another state of alert that we took into account in order to understand the tolerance towards the lactate, especially in women, and obviously that this benefited men. Talking about the cardiac frequency, even though men finished a lot later in this stage in comparison to women, they presented uh, values that were lower in cardiac frequencies. So we here we can understand the cardiac or the heart frequency. So we saw that in both genders, the recovery in the third minute was near to 100 in terms of heart rate, which indicated us that they recovered quite quick after the effort. And we condensed all of these variables in some graphs as the ones that I'm showing in the lower part of the screen, where we included the different uh, values 
in terms of the loads uh, with a specific time we could see the work that we would have to do taking into account that badminton has a lactic anaerobic a value so all of this allowed us to contribute to the work that we did with a not so high margin of error as my colleague mentioned and we did a series of tests and assessments using other tools i would like to introduce you to antrokinetic it's a software that i developed like six years ago and this allows us to find out all the anthropometric anthropometric assessment of a person and with five different tabs we can register all the different measurements of the person being assessed the morphologic structure and the structure structural state and it allows us to say if i have a body with specific features what would this person what sport would this person be ideal for so this is the tool that we have introduced for this beautiful sport called badminton dear colleague turn on your mic raul Thank you, Gerardo. So based on this comprehensive assessment that we did and that Gerardo just explained, we moved on to a third stage of this macrocycle planning 2019. This macrocycle 2019 was the fourth year of this pluriannual uh, cycle 2016-2019 that we presented in the beginning. So these are some of the features that we had in this planning and based on this comprehensive assessment that was shown by Gerardo. And these were the anthropometric and functional aspects that we found in athletes in considering the strengths and weaknesses that we found we presented these features so the first thing after the year 2018 which was the third macro cycle we had a short break in order to lower the loads N not so much in order to keep the sport structure so in the next macro cycle 2019 we could uh, consider the competences for the pre-games the classific qualifications and the post games so in the beginning of the year 2019 on January 7th, approximately, we had a first accumulation mesocycle. In general, I think that all of you, all of us know the ATR model that includes accumulation mesocycles, as well as transfer, transfer and realization. So the first mesocycles include accumulation and we did the same as other uh, seasons and we emphasized the pre-seasons uh, short pre-seasons mixed seasons so the physical characteristics would work in a coordinated way not in a fraction way in order to, to allow um, accumulation and actually one of the good things of atr was that that we can be flexible and i think that the model allows us to to be flexible but taking the internal control 
load in consideration. And then we did an aerobic work in the aquatic point of view, uh, ongoing race and strength and speed and to keep it and to keep this strength Uh, or to keep the work that we had done in the previous years. An important element in, in the in this planning was the own perception. We did this work in order to strengthen the other works that they were doing. And per we permanently worked on a series of exercises in court in the beginning in order to strengthen the general technique. For example, to keep that motor memory and strengthen everything that we, they had learned in the previous microcycle. So we did an ongoing work of four weeks, twice a day with an average of six hours per day, three in the morning, three in the afternoon. And that allowed us to do this uh, cycle. Now, a second mesocycle allowed us to transfer the accumulation. We worked on a, meso, on a mixed mesocycle, so to speak. And this allowed us to work in the gym, to do aerobic exercises and their own perception as well with the emphasis on more specific technique and introducing the tactical basis in a general way in order to accumulate the different trainings that we had to strengthen. In the different mesocycles, we found five more and we divided them. We adapted the model because of the circumstances surrounding us and we built four macrocycles, including the eight preparatory competitions and the main one, which were the games themselves. So these eight competitions were quite important because of the, obje the, tar the objective that we had, because the first objective was to prepare. That was part of the training development. If not, there was no way of controlling this. <clears throat> and they were also supposed to be part of the ranking in order to be first again, such as the first uh, games in 2015. So something really important to mention is that throughout the pluriannual cycle, the team of the Valley of Cauca the athletes from the Valley of Cauca participated and they played an administrative role, a biomedical role. From every point of view, they worked in an articulated way as a team. And that's how this planning was more viable in the sense that each one of them did their work based on that and based on the objectives that we had. So as we know, these mesocycles uh, included um, different aspects and they were quite proportional. And there were times in which it was not possible to have accumulation mesocycles, but we jumped from a transfer muscle cycle to a to, we moved from a realization 
as a cycle to uh, transfer as a cycle because we didn't have enough time and these made uh, loads high and we had to keep a very specific dosage in what we were doing in order to avoid any traumas and we saw this in the micro cycles their intensity were always high as we know micro cycles are uh, or include adjustment to load recover impact activation and competition and we always wanted to keep a high level but we wanted these peaks to allow us to uh, make progress but also to have space for recovery and we kept control with two elements which were and we already mentioned that heart rate was one that we monitored we uh, maximum oxygen consumption and another element that we worked throughout the whole cycle which was borg in order to see the perception of the effort so the children could help controlling those loads and we did this together with the whole the team of uh, the valley of in, the team called in their valley and because of the level of stress we also went to with psychological preparation and this also helped us control and add just uh, everything at a certain point in time another aspect was the periodical pedagogic tests there was a, an individual control and a collective control so we could keep these under control the other aspect where the emphasis on biomedical controls is were extremely important we had a sports scientist physiotherapist, the nutritionist, and we have to emphasize the fact that each one of the mesocycles and mi microcycles had uh, an exhaustive, uh, um, a detail follow-up in order to keep the nutrition that could help us in the process that we were carrying out. The same goes with fitness preparation. Now, this planning model was to prevent injuries. And actually, the athletes in the picture um, you can see how the athletes uh, had uh, reached their goal after the games. The objective was always to prevent injuries because they were playing this sport for more than 10 years like 30 years throughout the process and even though they had injuries because but we did they played badminton without any specific uh, scenarios for badminton but actually on some on concrete surfaces very hard uh, surfaces so they were injured which were treated but the idea of this planning was I mean, during this final microcycle, not to have any injuries. And with all of these that we're describing, we achieved that goal. The internal load biological indicators were heart uh, rate frequency, the VO2, the lactic acid uh, measurement, and the Borg scale, as my colleagues mentioned. But after other studies that we've done, we know that this is not enough. We have to delve into this even more. Now, the main axis of uh, this planning was the functional and anthropometric assessment, as Professor Herald mentioned. And then we had the fitness preparation and the technique and the tactics and all so on and so forth. But mainly from the physical preparation, we worked the strength, specifically designed to improve the deficiencies that we found and to strengthen positive aspects uh, 
the own percep their own perception was fundamental also muscle stretching the development of capabilities flexibility and a permanent recovery monitoring as a key aspect which was a strength in order to keep uh, making progress and achieve the goals i would also like to um emphasize the plyometry that we worked on as professor gerardo mentioned we adapted another study in biometry in order to include the technical part of the game and we adapted these so it could be more educational so we wouldn't cause any harm in athletes so we did these uh, adjustments and this allowed us to do a good development in the game we also worked in the technique technical tactical preparation based on all of these aspects here at the end we also mentioned the theoretical preparation we did this in a very articulated way and this allowed us to make progress in our context with the planning and finally as you can see in this picture The athletes were champions. They were the number one in the second edition of the national games, just as in the year 2015. And this was a, their a satisfaction because we worked quite hard with a lot of effort and sacrifices. And they still enjoy this because what's important to highlight here is that they enjoy this process, which is what's most important when a human being faces a project a life project well this is the end now it's evident that we need to keep a process a permanent control process in order to move forward and that's what we have here thank you raul perfect so now i have a couple of questions for each one of you in regards to your study can you please stop sharing the screen okay so From the work that you did, I see that you had these children that had gone through the shuttle time program, and after all of these processes, you took them to the next level at a competition level. So some coaches who are going through these process, training their first team and bring them to the competitive level this question is for you raul i don't have much time left so very shortly please as a coach would you use uh, these data in your training plan i would like to clarify something which is everything that we plan, we have to think what we're aiming based on the knowledge, on the assessment. We were able to plan everything and all the physical conditions and start to do a more specific control. This has to be more permanent, but we this clarified where we were aiming and what we were working based on. Based on the, these initiatives, I see that we could incorporate sports science and apply them to badminton. Uh, coaches can have access to these and should learn to implement these. I know some initiatives, for example, in Canada, in, in Canada and Peru, also in New York, they're doing an important and interesting work. Also in Argentina, Peru, and Cuba, because they have different models in order to determine. Uh, higher level athletes and this question is for Gerardo how could we improve the diagnosis of athletes so according to sciences applied to sports could 
this could aim the this could lead the work of the coaches. Thank you very much. In my profession, I haven't been comfortable using models that come from abroad because the idiosyncrasy of each country is specific and this has made me create unique models with our own results from our own region, which is the southwest of Colombia in this case. We still need a lot to explore in other dep departments and in other countries in order to find that idea, which is what complicated to find. And most definitely we require unique protocols but with unique results as well. So here, science most definitely is the guest of honor who would give us a possibility to find a less margin of error using a top uh, state-of-art technology. Perfect. Thank you, both of you. Thank you for sharing your study and your knowledge and experiences. And I would like to thank you both As always, it's quite enriching to discuss this topic with people who are making new changes in current badminton. Thank you very much. And to our audience, please help us improve the content quality of our course by filling out the poll you'll see on your screens. To our badminton family, get your smartphones ready to capture the QR code on your screen. We invite you to the next session entitled The Development Foundations of Badminton in France, which will be transmitted next Friday, October 9th at 3 p.m. Uh, Lima time, where we will have the pleasure of having Philippe Limousin from France. We encourage you to propose topics you're interested in. Write them in the chat box. I will also like to invite you to check out our, the Badminton, Badminton Panam's YouTube channel, where you can watch today's conference, as well as others we've had in the past on behalf of Badminton Panam. We thank you for joining us and we hope you liked this session. Take care and see you soon. Have a nice afternoon. Bye.